It's Tuesday, and we're coming to you live. I'm Scott Johnson with this great on? man right here, Hunter <laughs> Swain, and we're so glad that you took just a moment, spent Thank some you. time with us today. We, we really want to talk about something that's on our hearts, and so we know it's on the Father's heart. That's right. And um, let me just say something about this dude, okay? This guy is legit evangelist, okay? Mm -hmm. And I've been around the five-fold offices of ministry pretty much all my life, so I know that I know one when I see one. An evangelist sticks out like a sore thumb. You know what I'm saying? And I worked for one for over 20 years, and, and he he's my spiritual father, and so I'm very at home with an evangelist. Yeah. I welcome them into my life, and I accept and receive their giftings and their anointings and their callings. And let me just say this. It is a privilege and an honor, Hunter Swain, thank you. to have you in my life and how much I love you and care you. for you and just thank the Lord that Amen. he's brought you uh, right here Amen. to share with us today Amen. and be a part of what God wants to say yes, to you yes. today because he yes. has a specific word <clears throat> in mind. He knows exactly Amen. where you're at. Amen. He knows what you're dealing with, your challenges that you're facing. Amen. He knows whether you're on top of your problem or underneath that problem. Okay. But I guarantee you, by the time we get through with today's session, you're going to be on top of the world. Amen. In Jesus' name. <laughs> In, In Jesus', Jesus name. name. Amen. Amen. Let's talk Amen. about outreach today. Yeah. Something that really, at one time or another, God sent somebody into your life, Come on. maybe directly or indirectly, right. and reached out to you. That's right. And so I, I love uh, some of the experiences that Hunter has had that he shared with me over the years. I want you to tell us a story about something that happened in yeah. the past um, when it comes to this. Sure, yeah. So um, <clears throat> I've been thinking recently a lot. Uh, the Lord's been reminding me of a testimony of uh, when I went to Hollywood. So when I was at Christ for the Nations, um, we had the opportunity to do different outreaches in the summer, Asia, Europe, Africa, different things. And I... I felt led to go to Hollywood. And I'm like, I'm like, God, I, I want to go to another country. But he's like, no, I want you to stay right here in America. And long story short, we went to Hollywood. And uh, one day we were walking up and down the streets and just looking for people to share the gospel with. And uh, we were by the, the Asian theater. I don't know if you have you ever been to Hollywood. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, the Asian theater, super cool. We were by there and uh, this guy approaches me and he says, hey, man, do you do you know where I could buy some weed? And, and I'm like, uh, man, I said, man, and I kind of laughed at his boldness. I was like, wow. Uh, I was like, no, nah, man, actually, I don't. I said, you know, I, I kind of, I used to do that, but, you know, my life has been changed. And, um, and I said, but, you know, I've seen some medical places all around, like if that's your thing, you know, whatever. <laughs> and, uh, and he's like, okay, okay. And long story short, um, he, he, he started walking away and he said, man, what, what made you want to change your life? And so I went back to him and I began to share my testimony about how, you know, I had tried all the things of the world and it left me empty and broken and hopeless. And, uh, and I realized that Jesus was the answer. Jesus is what I needed um, to fill that void in my life. And uh, I shared my testimony with him and I asked him, I said, man, are, do you, do you, I said, I believe God is calling you to give your heart to him. I said, you know, do you, do you want to do that right now? And he was kind of like, man, I don't know. Like, I'm not sure. I don't know if I'm ready. And How many times have we seen that? Oh my God, too? all the time, it's real. all the time. Yeah. But, and it's going to get good right here because here's what happens. He said, uh, okay. And so I prayed for him and he went on about his way. And I said, God, I would love to meet this man one more time while we're here. And we were there for about another four or five days. Uh, three days go by. We're at Venice beach, which I don't know, it's at least maybe 45 minutes away from, from Hollywood. And, uh, I was out, we were getting ready to load back the bus to go back to where we were staying. And we were sharing the gospel with this couple. All of a sudden I hear this lady say, that's him, that's him, that's him. And I'm like, who is this lady? And she's pointing at me. And I look behind the crowd and there's this man standing next with her. And it was that man right there. What? And he's shaking really? his head and he's like, I can't believe this, this is crazy. And he knew what it meant. He knew what that moment meant and what was about to happen. And so I went to him, I said, bro, I said, uh, you, you being here today, that means that God is after you. you and I said, he loves you. And, and he brought me here and you here on the same day so that you could have this encounter with him because he, he doesn't want you to leave LA uh, without giving your life to him. And so long story short, um, we prayed together and he received Christ. And then um, and I felt in my heart, I said, I think there's one more step you need to take. He was a drug dealer. And, and he was like, what is that? And I said, I think you know. And so he began to take drugs out of his pockets 
<laughs> put them over into my hands, and I had hands full of, of marijuana in my hands, and uh, and right then and there, and like his his girlfriend was there, she was like, no, don't do it, let's just smoke one more time, let's do it one more time, and he's like, no, baby, I got to do this, and right then and there, he gave it all up and surrendered his life to Jesus. What a story, man! That, Come on, isn't that awesome? Come on, God, <laughs> that is that's so incredible. Good. Yeah, I mean, I love the fact that you put yourself in those positions and places. And it doesn't matter where it is. Many times it's just orchestrated by God and That's He it. works with that moment. That's it. That moment becomes divine, that's isn't it. it? That's right. And that's that's what took place. Well, the time. Bible says, 1 Peter uh, 3, 15 and 16, it says, always be prepared to give a, a, an answer for the hope that you have, right? It's saying I'll, always be ready uh -huh. to share what's inside of you yeah. because you never know when God is going to bring someone in your path. Right. Um, it could be at a grocery store. It could be in school at work. Uh, I believe that God is constantly setting the body of Christ up with opportunities to share our faith, to show the love of God. Right? So you're, what you're saying, and I, I hear Hunter saying this, is this isn't just the mandate or the assignment of a pastor. That's right. That's right. Or, a, a, you know, an evangelist like Hunter is. Come on or a Sunday school teacher or a small group leader. Yep. No, this is a calling, yep. an assignment to every single one of us. Yep. The Bible says, I mean, this is the Great Commission. I have, I literally have a tattooed all over my stomach. Mark 16, <laughs> 50, I just love it. I am an evangelist, right? Yeah, you are. Uh, uh, Jesus said to disciples, he said, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. He says, preach the gospel to every creature right? He wasn't saying that just, and now people say, oh, well, that's the disciples. Okay. How about uh, second Timothy? Paul told Timothy, uh, in the church that Timothy was the pastor of do the work of an evangelist, yeah. right? Everyone is called to share their faith in some way. It's not about a title. It's not about, uh, uh an anointing. We all have the anointing. Yeah, that's We've right. all got the power of God that's inside right. of us. And really, uh, the evangelist call is to equip yeah. the saints to do that. It's yeah. not just the evangelist or the pastor, you know, a lot of people want to bring their, their friends to church. And I think that's great. But at the same time, it's not, it's not just our job to be the ones that lead them to Jesus. That's right. you know, I believe God is setting you up every day, every week with some sort of opportunity to show love, to share love vocally, verbally, whatever, some way, somehow. I mean, Hunter, I can't tell you many times that the Lord's had me reach out. I've literally driven sometimes Jeez. as much as seven hours to go to speak to a certain person. Yep. Another time, four hours to go and speak because the Lord laid them on my heart. Yep. And he said, I'm sending you on a mercy mission and I want you to reach out to them. Now this has happened over and over and over again, yeah. but I find it to be part of the DNA of who I am yeah. because uh, you know, some of you know my personal story and the story of my family, but uh, at a time when my dad was an unbeliever, my mother was a believer. She was in hot pursuit of God, but my dad was a, just a scamp. Yeah. Some of you don't even know what that means. <laughs> uh, he, he was just a, a mean guy and uh, abusive in many ways. Um, and there's my mom with her four kids, almost, almost living like a single mother, even though my father still lives in the home. He really doesn't have anything to do with our right, upbringing right, at right. the time. And one night, about 10 o'clock at night, a pastor showed up at our house, knocked on the door, asked my mom, is Kenneth Johnson here? She said, no. What, what, do you know when you're going to come home? No, he's out gambling and drinking. Okay. So sure enough, he said, if you don't mind, I'm going to sit out here wow. on the front porch wow. until he comes home. Wow. Well, he didn't come home till about 5 o'clock the next morning. Wow. And he sat out there on that wow. porch and they watched the sunrise come up and my dad got born wow, again wow. and I'm going to tell you it went wow. just like that from darkness to light in wow, our home Jesus from so much hatred and hurt and brokenness to, you, to fullness of joy to hope to faith it was like somebody flipped the switch come on. and the light came on yeah. And for the first time, we had peace and harmony in our home. All because some guy, some pre this happened to be a preacher, some preacher decided, I'm going to sit on this front porch till this man comes home. I, who, who, who sent him? The Holy Spirit come sent on. him. He come was on. on assignment. We know what that assignment looks like. Like I said earlier, I know what that assignment looks like. 
But you know, don't dismiss That's yourself right. from the conversation because I guarantee you there are assignments Jesus. that God will place in your life Amen. to go on a mercy mission That's to right. reach That's out right. and touch somebody. It may not be that they're on drugs. It right. may not be that they're alcoholics or anything like that. It may just be that life has beaten them That's down right. and That's they right. don't know that God's even an option. Come on. Don't you recognize that to be true yeah. these days? Absolutely. That they don't even consider God as an option Absolutely. like he could possibly ever change anything yeah. in my life. That's right. Talk uh, about it. I, I, well, I, I want to say too, just on that note, um, you know, it doesn't look, it doesn't always have to look like driving four hours. It doesn't have to look like That's sitting right. outside someone's house. It doesn't have to look like, you know, I use the example a lot, standing on a, a table in, in Whataburger or at a restaurant and saying, <laughs> you know, Jesus loves you, give your life. Now, hey, if God calls you to do it, do it, yeah. right? But, um, you know, a lot of times God is just asking you to do something simple, a, a simple act of love. A sim Man, I have literally, I saw someone, uh, I literally told someone one time, I said, I just want you to know that Jesus loves you. Five minutes later, she was giving her life to Jesus. You know what I mean? It just, yeah. you never know what a small act of obedience can do. Um, you know, I, I, you've seen the testimony of the young man at Verdure right down mm -hmm. here at the street. Mm -hmm. I told him that God, the Lord told me to tell you, uh, you're blessed. That's literally, I went and told him, God told me to tell you, man, that you're blessed. And long story short, he ends up giving his life to Jesus, not, not with me that day, but, uh, and he gets baptized and now he's serving at a church. I mean, dude, dude's awesome, you know? Yeah. And it's just like, you know, a little act of obedience can really change someone's life. It doesn't have to be crazy. You just do what you feel Holy Spirit is telling you to do. And like you said, a lot of people don't even consider God to be an option. And you're there to say, hey, he is an option. He's thinking about you. Yeah. He loves you and yeah. he wants a relationship with you. You know, today is the day of salvation. That's it. And so often we think that that's a come to Jesus. Sometimes it is. But sometimes it is like Hunter reached out and told that young man, you're blessed, then gave him a hundred dollar bill. That's right. And he reached back towards us and told us that he'd been questioning, mm -hmm. God, do you, do Come you, on, do yeah. you even know I'm here? <laughs> Do, can you help me a little bit? Just give me some comfort, confirmation, some validation that I'm on your heart and on your mind. Yeah. And sometimes that's all really God wants to do. That's it. He will send you into somebody's life and he will just literally utilize yep. you. Yep. I didn't say use you. I said he'll utilize you to reach out and touch them with a physical touch because he is not a physical person with a flesh and blood body that mm. can actually do it. And he needs that tangible touch yes, sir. through, from him, through you to them. Yes, yes. They don't feel you. Yes. They feel God That's in right. you. That's right. That's right. And that is what is so, we, we underestimate the value of that. We underestimate that, you know, because we think, no, it's about me, my gift, my yeah, calling, my yeah. anointing. My, no, it's so not. Wrong. But pfft, you know what it's about? It's about God in you. Yes, sir. And yes, how sir. he wants to do that through you. That's right. But they, if we can get, just totally dismiss ourselves and get out of the way, That's right. God will do magnificent, significant things. Who is it today? Yep. Who is it today? What is that assignment today? What is that mandate yep. today yep. that God and the Holy Spirit would put on your heart? Amen. I guarantee you right now, Hunter, Amen. There's faces yeah, that's it. that are Names. popping up in people's minds right now. Yep. I need to touch that person. Yep. I need to reach out. I need to call them. I need to text them. I, I know where they're at. They're at Walmart. That's I it. know where they're at. They're over here or they're at the job. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. I want to say one more thing. Acts 1.8. Listen, it says that Holy Spirit will come upon you with power. Why, what? To be witnesses to the nations. Right? So understand, as a believer in Jesus Christ, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. You now have the power. You know how you have the boldness. Yeah. You have everything that you need to go and be a witness. And it's a ministry, listen, of seeds and of watering seeds. You could just be sowing the seed today. You could be watering the seed. It doesn't have to, they're not, it doesn't always look like them. Most of the time, it doesn't look like them giving their life to Jesus right exactly. there. It just looks like an act of love and God's going to deal with that. So like he said, 
Who is that person to you today? Pray about it right now. In fact, let's just pray. Let's Father, I just pray, uh, Lord, for anyone watching this, whether live or later on, Father, you would speak to them right now, Holy yes. Spirit. I pray for names, for faces, for mm -hmm. locations, Father, to come to their mind. Lord, they may not know exactly what they're going to say, but Lord, as they go out, I believe you will fill their mouth with words and you will touch them yes. through this person, Father, whether it be a text message, an email, a, a, a comment, uh, or a face-to-face -face interaction, Lord, move them today, right now in boldness to be a witness for your name's sake. In Jesus' name, amen. You tuned in today for such a time as this. Yes, sir. This was God saying, hey, not just Hunter, not just Scott, yes, sir. not just that pastor or that other preacher or that one you think is so gifted and talented, so handsome, so beautiful, that it would be easy for them to step up into someone's space and to minister to them and they would be accepted by that. Hey, I've been rejected oh. in that area. I know you have too. But you know what? So is Jesus. Right. But You're in good company. Are they rejecting <laughs> us or are they rejecting <laughs> exactly. him? Exactly. Right? So that's exactly on. right. But you're in good company and that's, that's right. what I want that's you right. to see. We know that God brought you across us today. Amen. Amen. Whether you're listening to, watching this on YouTube or whether you listen to us Facebook Live, we thank you for being a part of this. And we thank you for allowing God to do what he wants to do through you Amen. in Jesus' Amen. name. Hey, remember this. All things are possible to him who yes. believes. Bless you.